Hello everybody and welcome to another live English class. I'm Christian and this is Kangaroo English. <laughs> um, before I start, as always, I just want to say a massive thanks to everybody who supports me on Patreon. Um, you are the reason that I can do these live classes and that I can spend time researching and learning and making classes because of your support. So thank you very much. <laughs> um, hello to everybody uh, who's here in class. Uh, we have um, Lusa, Eileen, Epic Fail is here again, Jamila, uh, D Z Um Double A Sebastian from France, Suresh Kama, Nabil Jalali, Ariana Samaum, Carmenola Gonzalez Rios, Gosha, hello Gosha, Patricia's here, Dennis, Anna Rita, Igor, Michelle Ramos, Ros Angela. Uh, Lots of um, lots of, of of great students here in the class. Um, it's good to see you again. Um, and don't forget that if you want, you can uh, buy some really fashionable kangaroo English merchandise, which is great quality. And also, you look you know you look like a criminal if you want to you know give me your money. It's good. <laughs> um, so, today I want to teach you some idioms. Because yesterday I taught a few idioms and I think all of you really enjoyed learning some new, um, some new idioms. So, today I'm going to teach you some more idioms. Some more idioms with my beautiful drawing, my beautiful artwork. Um, but first, uh, I'd love to answer any questions that you have. If you have any questions, I'll, I'll spend just a little bit of time answering some questions. Um, uh, yeah. Um, so if there's anybody here um, who has any doubts about anything, just, just ask me. That's why I'm here. Uh, okay, so um, Musin has um, a question about preppers. <laughs> okay. What is a prepper? Um, okay, so I, 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 I'm not sure, but I think that this started in the United States. Okay, and it's it's quite. Um, it, I've seen lots of documentaries and programs about preppers, um, and basically they are people who are prepared. All right, so prepper comes from it's an abbreviation of prepared. So the question is, what are they prepared for? Uh, they are prepared for various different things, but normally they are prepared for the end of the world, the apocalypse, the, the end of human civilization. And it could be for various reasons, because of zombies, or because of nuclear war, or because of um, uh, maybe some type of virus. So these people are prepared for this. So maybe they have a special house made of concrete and steel. They have water. They have big supplies of water and food. Um, basically, they, they could be self-sufficient for years. They could live, they could live underground for years. Now, 
I don't know. Um, some of them are just, some of these people are normal people who are preparing, you know, for, for the worst. But some of them are, are, you know, really crazy. Like they think that aliens are going to come and attack Earth or they think that, you know, um, <laughs> you know, zombies are going to come out of the ground and, you know, so. And that, that's what a prepper is. A prepper is a person preparing for the end of the world, okay? <laughs> um, uh, okay, um, let's have a look at some more questions here. Um, so, Sergio has a question about used to. Great question, common question, okay. Um, so, there are actually two versions of used to, two, two verbs which are very similar. So one is to used to, okay? And the other one is to be used to. So they both talk about habits, okay? They're talking about habits things that you are accustomed to doing. So, to used to talks about habits, things that you regularly did, things that you were accustomed to doing in the past. Now, you don't do them. Okay? So, you could say, I used to uh, run 20 kilometers. I used to run 20 kilometers, but now, no. Okay? And you can see that we use this verb with the infinitive. Okay, so we have used to and then, and then infinitive. So it's a habit that you don't have now. But this one is different. This is a habit or something you are accustomed to now. Right? Something that's, that's now. So you can say, I am used to running 10 kilometers. So this verb we use with the gerund. Hola. Sorry, one, one moment, I have a visitor. Hola. Academia Cangur. Sí, Dime gracias. Un DNI, por favor. Uh, y 144 sí. sí. 7003 H. Perfecto. Muy bien. Gracias. gracias Chao. Chao. <laughs> Sorry. Some uh, some mail. <laughs> uh, because today today I'm here alone. There's nobody to answer the door. Um, okay. This is uh, this is a book that I bought um, I bought for my son Luca um, it's a book about the human body <laughs> because um, at the moment he's, he's, he's asking me he says daddy why does my tummy rumble 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 is when your tummy's like, and he's why? Why does it rumble? Um, and of course, I, I told him that the technical word for this rumbling is borborygmus. <laughs> and he said, "Daddy, what's borborygmus?" No, no, I didn't really. So I bought him this book, and this book is um, it has pop-ups. You know, the book pops up. Uh, with with explanations of the intestines and I don't know. I think it will be a, a good book. Uh, I hope Yeah, so um, Yeah, so this one is a habit you have now, okay, so I am used to running 10 kilometers It's a hab a new habit Okay, I, I hope that answers your question um, Let me just I'm just I'm just going to answer 
Uh, one more question, and then I'm going to do some, some idioms, okay? So, um, let's have a look. Um, I'm trying to go back to, to, to the original comments. Okay, here we go. Um, so, uh, well, um, Gosha wants to know about the difference between rise and raise. Okay. Uh, um, so the, the explanation maybe is a little bit, I don't know, because I need to think about the, the, the specifics, but um, my explanation will be a little bit strange. Okay, bear with me, bear with me. Um, so the, the, meaning, the meaning really is, is very similar to, to go up, right? So you can say that prices rise or, um, you know, something will raise. But here's, here's one important difference is that rise, we, we, we don't need an object. Okay, so I rise at seven o'clock or the people are rising up, they're rising up or um, the, the, the prices are rising. But this verb, okay, um, this verb, we need, we need an object, we need a, we need a, um, a, a direct object for the verb. So I raise like what? Like, I raise what? It's like we have, uh, the, the, the subject is performing the action of the verb. Um, so, so this one, you know, can be intransitive, and this one is a, a transitive verb. Very important. And normally we need prepositions, like you can say rise up. Okay, I rise, rise up. Um, but this one, no, this one, no, it doesn't take a preposition. I raise up, no, I raise down, I raise through, no. This one, no, I raise my children. But then, so, so this one's complicated because, because of the preposition, we have lots of different meanings as a phrasal verb. And this one has some different meanings, like raise can mean to, to bring up your children, to, to educate and teach your children, to raise them. Or you can raise prices. Um, it's more complicated than I can explain in two minutes. But this is the overview. So um, this would be an intransitive verb, transitive verb, needs a preposition normally. This one doesn't, okay? That's the quick explanation off, off the top of my head, okay? Uh, the sun, yeah, so Christina's saying that, Christina says, the sun raises, no, the sun rises. But we could say, the sun raises the temperatures. See, it's transitive, so... We, we have the sun creating an effect on something. Yeah, and you, so you cannot rise somebody up. No, you can raise a person up. Raise, that's this verb, okay? Um, what else do we have? Um, rise, <laughs> raise the lamp, uh, raise, raise the lamp? I, I don't know what that means. Um, uh, different, yeah, okay, so now I want to, to start teaching you some, some idioms, and similar to yesterday, we're going to do idioms in categories, okay? So, um, first category is this one. Now, now I'm not an artist, okay?
Okay, what's that? Does anybody know? Okay, it could be a lamb because a lamb is the baby. But it's not the baby, it's the, the, the very good. It is, it is the, the mummy or the daddy, it's the sheep. Um, now, what color normally, normally what color are sheep? Normally. <laughs> normally they're white, right? I mean, normally sheep are white. But sometimes you have the black sheep, right? And the black sheep is a person. Although sometimes it cannot be a person, it could be a company or a product, right? The black sheep is something that is out of the ordinary, something not normal, something different and strange, right? Um, like, you could say that, um, you know, I am the black sheep of the family because I love pizza and everybody else in my family hates pizza. <laughs> it's not racist, okay? It's not, <laughs> it's not racist. It's just because sheep are not normally black, okay? That's the only reason. Um, Maybe you're right, Muhammad. Maybe black sheep are aliens. <laughs> um, so yeah, so this 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 is a a very typical one. You know, in Spanish it's the same. They say uh, oveja negra. I don't know. In in your language, tell me. Do they say black sheep in in Russian or in Hindi or? Tell me. I I'd, I'd love to know. I'd love to know. <laughs> Uh, okay, um, okay, this one. Um, oh my god. Um, <laughs> okay, so, wow, so in, in French, Patricia says, in French you say black sheep. In Russian you say black sheep. Um, in Poland, you say black sheep. In Hindi, black sheep. So this is a universal, a universal thing. Okay, you know, uh, Portuguese. Um, in Italian, pecora nera. Pecora nera. <laughs> What's this one? Okay, this is a pig, not a pork. Pig is the animal and pork is the meat from the animal. Or yes, if you want, you could say swine. Uh, swine is, refers to the category of the animals like this in general, right? Um, so, Yara, Yara Muhammad, you have this correct, okay? So, what is one thing that a pig cannot do? A pig cannot fly. Imagine, imagine if a pig had wings, right? And a pig could fly. So it's, it's impossible. Pigs don't fly. It's impossible. So in English, when you say pigs fly, it means that something is impossible, right? So for example, um, for example, you could say um, the politicians in Spain will will be totally honest when pigs fly <laughs> the um um scarlett johansson is going to come to my house and have drinks with me when pigs fly <laughs> um it's something impossible well maybe not impossible but very unlikely very improbable okay <laughs> um Oh, um, and, and Mohammed has, 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 has brought up an interesting, an interesting one related to the pig, okay? So, a pig is made of bacon, right? 
And remember that, um, that in the past, meat, any type of meat, was very, um, it was rare. Meat was very expensive and precious. Meat was something special. Maybe you would only eat meat once per week if you were lucky, right? Um, and so, um, when, so, so money and meat are, are related, very strongly related, because money is really important in life, unfortunately, and meat is really important. So they, the concept is related, okay? So you can say this, bring home Bring home the bacon. Bring home the bacon means to bring home the money, to earn the money. So you could say that my, my teaching here in the school brings home the bacon. That's, that's why I have my Ferrari out the front. <laughs> um, so... <laughs> Wow. Um, in Portuguese, it's a no dia de sao nunca or nem que abacatusa. Something about a, a cow. Something about a cow or something. I'm not sure. In French, you say quand les poules ont des dents. When hens will have teeth. How's my French accent? Come on. My French accent is incredible. <laughs> In Russian, you say, when the cancer on the mountain whistles. That is very strange. Very strange. Um, uh, in, in Morocco, you say, bring a loaf of bread. Okay. The same as in, the same as in English. You can say that. You can say, um, to, in English, we say, win the bread. To win the breadwinner. So I could ask you, um, who is the breadwinner in your house? Who has the money to buy the bread? You know, bread and bacon, they're really important things, right? Okay, time for more artwork. Um, Any, any ideas what, what, what that is? Yes, it is a hamburger, <laughs> or it could be, it could be a hamburger one day. Um, <laughs> a load of bull. <laughs> wow. Um, Sifrawi, very nice. Okay, so this is n not a cow, it's a bull. And this beautiful apparatus here are the horns. So you, if you want to take control of a, of a situation, because remember this, this bull, he's out of control. You know, he's like, he's, he's smashing all your things. He's trying to kill you. Okay. He's angry. So you have to take control of the situation, okay? You have to take the bull by the horns. Take the bull by the horns, man. Take control of the situation. Control that crazy bull. Um, and it seems like maybe this is another universal idiom, 
Um, Gosha says in Poland it's the same thing. Um, I don't know about in other countries. Um, okay, Patricia in French, yeah. Prendre le taureau, pandas con. <laughs> oh my god. I'm s French, I'm sorry. I'm really sorry, French, about my, my pronunciation. Uh, Suman, hold the bull by the horns means to be courageous. No, it's not about being create, uh, courageous. It's about, um, it's about taking control. It's good to see you back in class, Suman. I haven't seen you for a long time. Um, <laughs> in Argentina, it's the same. Okay, okay. Um, and uh, now, another important one. Okay, another important one is, is this, okay? So, from the, from, the, from the back of the bull, you know, from the back of the bull, you have something, you know, something not good, right? Something bad. In English, we call it bull I think you know what this word is. Bullsh... Okay, you know this word. Now... This is one of my favorite, one of my favorite words in all of the English language. Okay, this word, bullshit, because it is so versatile. It can be used in a positive way, in a negative way, as an adjective, as a noun, as an adverb. It's just spectacular. So, for example, if, if, if I love your car, if you have a beautiful car, I say, man, that car is bullshit, right? Or um, if, if, I, if I think that you're, you're talking a lot of nonsense, I say, listen, stop talking bullshit. <laughs> or, um, you know, as an adjective, I'm like, wow, this is the most bullshit class in the world. <laughs> you know, so it's, it's just, <laughs> thank you, Nabil. It's true, my classes are bull. <laughs> I mean, I, one of my favorite words. I love it. <laughs> okay, um, let's do another one. Um, now, now we're going to we're going to change to a different thing. So no more animals. Now we're going to talk about work. Okay. Now, do you know what a blacksmith is? Who knows what a blacksmith is? Hmm. It's not racist. <laughs> it's not a person wearing black. It's not an actor. It's not related to Will Smith. Um, yes, it's, it's a person who works with metal. A person who makes swords and armor and a person who makes things out of metal, okay? So, in, in, in English, a smith is somebody who makes something, right? So you can have a silversmith, a blacksmith, uh, 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 a, a sipsmith, a person who makes drinks, a sipsmith, any type of smith, right? Um, and a blacksmith because when when they finished work they were black from the from the fire okay they were completely black from the fire um, so a blacksmith is a person who 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 makes swords right now what they do is they have the fire okay so they have the this is the fire okay and they put the They put the sword in the fire. Yes, it's called a furnace. Very good. Okay, so they put the fire, the, the sword in the furnace, and then the iron is hot. So now the, the iron, because 
iron is is like um, you know a ferrous material iron so the iron is hot right it's hot um, and you can only you can only make you know you can only mold you can only mold the sword when the iron is hot and this action is called striking strike 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 so the idiom is strike oops strike while Strike while the iron is hot. So it, it, it basically means to, you cannot wait. If, if there's an, an opportunity, do it. Okay? It's like if, if you really want a job and you see, you see a, 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 an advertisement for the job, apply for the job. Strike while the iron is hot. Don't hesitate. Don't delay. Do it. Boom. You have one chance. This is some... Um, wow. So, apparently, it's the same in French, the same in Poland. Um, <laughs> the Empire Strikes Back. <laughs> um, uh, ah. Patti il ferro quando è caldo. I think that's Italian, no? <laughs> but... But le fer quand il chaud. Okay, the see. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> oh, okay, what's what's another one from um Ah, oh, okay. Ah, ah, ah. And um and now imagine if you have not one sword in the fire. Imagine you have ten swords. Imagine you have like all of these swords, right, in the fire. Yeah, many, you know, many. So you say many. You have many irons in the fire. You have a lot of, a lot of things happening at the same time. Um, you know, a lot of opportunities, a lot of different... You're, you're doing a lot of things. You got, you're making this sword and this sword. You, you are Iron Man. <laughs> wow, we got another one here. I don't know what, I don't know what language this is. Ogni lasciate e persaho, Christian. I don't know what that means. <laughs> Maybe I said something really bad. <laughs> Um, so Francesco Prosino, what does it mean to keep it in the vault? Well, a vault, a vault is a big container full of money in the bank. The, the vault. And to keep it in the vault means to keep it safe, to keep it a secret. Um... It's true, actually. Um, strike. Strike is a great word. It's a military word as well, right? Like, strike. Counter-strike. Like, you remember yesterday we were talking about that English actor? Battlefield Counter-Strike. <laughs> My favorite actor. I love that guy. Um, uh, okay, let's... Let's do... Let's do... Let's do the human body. Yeah. Um, he he's bald like me. See, look. <laughs> this is my alter ego, the bald guy. It looks like your boss. Your boss is a stick man. <laughs> um, 
Uh, okay, so let's um, let's let's see what parts of the body here. Oh, oh. Okay. Um, okay. I want you to do some work. Um, what's what's this called? What's the name of this? Very good. It's the mouth. Okay. Okay. And um, this, I think this is very easy, okay? Yes. Uh, and this as well, very easy. Um, and this as well, I, is very easy. Uh, and this, in general, the head, yeah. Okay. Um, okay, what about this? Do you guys know what this is? Huh? Oh, you guys are good. Yes, it's the neck. Oh. Ah, the neck. And, you know, we have a special word for this part of the neck, okay, this, this part here. It's a special word that we stole from the French. It's called the nape. The nape of your neck. Mm. This is the beautiful, the beautiful part of a woman, is the nape of her neck. Yeah? Uh, okay, um... Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Ah, okay. What about this one, guys? It's a little bit more difficult. What's this part of your body? This. Yes, for the perfume, exactly. Oh, Monica Miguez. Very good. Very good, guys. Great work. So. Sternum? <laughs> yes, it is the sternum, I suppose. Maybe this is the sternum. Maybe you're a doctor, I think. Only a doctor would say sternum. <laughs> um, ooh, okay, what about this one? What's this? Thorax? Yeah, okay, another thorax, yeah. Good, this is your shoulder. Okay, a little bit more difficult. So this is the foot. Okay, what do you call this part? The back, you know, the back of the, the back of the foot. Ooh, Mohammed and Jashik and Sergio and Panda. Wow, you guys know a lot of vocabulary. Is this heel? It's your heel, and that's why uh, girls wear the high heel, you know, the high heels. And some men, some men wear high heels, you know, yeah. It's 2018, you know, men are the lipstick, eyeliner, high heels, whatever, you know, no problems. Um, okay, so um, what about some more some more difficult vocabulary. Who knows what this is called? Does anybody know what this is? Uh, no, this is, this is a clavicle here. Wow, very good. This is the elbow. Wow, very nice. Elbow. Yeah. Uh, okay, more advanced. What do you call this little here under your nose? You see this little indent here? It has a special name. Does anybody know what this name is right here? Uh, mustache, so this, this is the mustache here. Uh, uh, and 
But this, what's this? This, this little thing here. <laughs> I think my, my, the, the, the funniest thing for me in Spanish is that this, this here, your chin, your chin in Spanish they call it a cheese, informally. Informally this is your cheese. You say, wow, he's got a big cheese. <laughs> Eileen Cheng, very nice. It's called the philtrum. This is the philtrum. Mm. Very, very good. Great word, the philtrum. That's not a that's not a very common thing to know, no. Um, okay, one final thing, part of the body. Okay, if you open your mouth and you go ah, uh, and you look at the back at the back of your throat, you have a little thing like this. Okay, a little thing like this. Does anybody know what that's called in English? Uh, I don't know if it is a gland, I don't know what it is, <laughs> but um, uh, no, it's not the epiglottis. Very nice. Uh, I'm sorry, I can't read your name because it's in Cyrillic, but yes, in English it's called the uvula. Oops. Ah. Uvula. And it's called the uvula because... This comes from the Latin for grapes. You know, grapes, grapes to make, to make wine. Because if you look at this, it's like a little, like a little bunch of grapes hanging at the back of your throat. You see, it's like this, no. You see, it's similar, it's similar, like grapes. Wow. Okay. <laughs> okay. So um, we don't need elbow. We don't need elbow. Okay. So let's do some some idioms. So I think I'm going to <laughs> Rodrigo. That's a fair comment to be to be honest. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna, you, you have to do all of the work, okay? You have to do all of the work. Now, if, if I want to, to, to work with you, I want to work with you to, to invent an idea, okay? I wanna work with you to, 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 think, to think of an idea. What, what part of the body do you think that we use for this? When, when we want to think of an idea. The brain, but one of these words, one of these words, yes, okay, good. So, what is the idiom, what is the idiom in English when I'm saying, okay, let's, let's think of an idea together. Let's think of an idea, you and me. Do you know what this idiom is? Yes, my head is similar to an egg. Thank you for pointing that out. <laughs> okay, not brainstorm. Okay, because brainstorm's a verb, this is an idiom. Oh, okay, so Jack talking, something similar to share the head. Share the head. Oh, musin tene. Very nice, to put your heads together. Put, so you could say put our heads together, put your heads together, put their heads together, okay? So you, you can choose, choose the pronoun, okay? So to put your heads together means to, to work together to think of an idea. Okay? Okay. Um, let's eliminate it. Now, now imagine if the teacher, the teacher comes, the teacher comes into the class and says, okay guys, 
Okay, guys, I have some very, very exciting news. And you're like, oh, oh. <laughs> what, what, which, which part of the body do we... Um, okay, l'instinct, l'instinct de moi, l'instinct, l'instinct, I don't know, the death instinct, yes, absolutely correct, it's very good, very good, we say, So the idiom is to be all ears. So you can say, I am all ears. We are all ears. They were all ears. It means that you're like totally 100% paying attention, listening. Okay? Um, yeah, so and you, you guys are offering lots of other idioms. I need your ear. Put your heads together. It's great. It's great. Okay. Um, eliminated. Okay. Okay. What about this one? Okay. What about this one? This one's easy, I think. So imagine if all of your friends, they go to a party. They go to this party, but they don't invite you. Your friends don't invite you to the party because I don't know why they don't like you <laughs> because you're very pesau. <laughs> so your, your, your friends don't invite you to the party. And so the next time you see your friends, you're like, <laughs> <laughs> my, my acting is brilliant, right? I'm not talking to you. <laughs> what what do we call this? Any any ideas what this could be related to related to this? Related to this? Okay, so I, I know that in some languages you say give give the back. Okay, dar la spalda, but but no. In English, okay, Suman Suman nailed it. Very good. We say to give the cold shoulder. Okay, it's cold. There's no, there's no warmth. Okay, you're not friendly. You're not warm and friendly. You're cold. It's the cold shoulder. Give the cold shoulder. You say, ah, oh, well... Next time I see my friends, I'm going to give them the cold shoulder. <laughs> okay, <laughs> moving right along. Um, okay. Okay. <clears throat> I have a secret. I have a terrible secret this secret is it's pressing on me okay the secret is like oh there's so much pressure okay I need to <sighs> it's because it's it's look it's like there's so much weight the secret and I need to so think, think about the opposites. We have in and out, and we have um, over and under, and then we have on and... Very good. So some of you could guess this idiom is to, to get something off your chest. So get something off to get a secret off your chest to get 
um, get it to get it off your chest. It's like you go out with your friends and you have, you know, you have too many vodkas and you're like, <laughs> I, I hate my mother-in-law. She's a dragon. I just want to kill her. I, <laughs> and, and your wife is like, what? I'm sorry. I I needed to get off my chest. <laughs> I I want to kill your mum. <laughs> oh, I'm I'm sorry about all of this terrible, you know, acting. I just you know, it's Tuesday. Come on. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay. Done. Um. <laughs> Okay, let's do this one. Heal. Now, imagine that you're, you're in a shop. You're in a shop and you see this beautiful, beautiful telephone. And you really want that telephone. It's the new, the new iPhone and you're like, oh my God, I love that telephone. So, you look around, okay? You look around and you take the telephone and you put it in your pocket and then you run, right? Now, tell me what happens now? What happens when you run? Hmm? What happens when you run with the, new, with the new iPhone in your pocket? Huh? You're fleeing, you're running away and <laughs> But what happens then? Probably somebody is following you, right? Probably a security guard or maybe the owner of the shop. Somebody is chasing you. Come back! Stop! You! Come back with that iPhone! <laughs> right? Okay. And in English, we say, they are hot on your heels. Hot on your heels. Hot on hot on your heels because they're angry, right? They're hot. They're angry. They're, they're running. They're sweating. They're hot. They're hot on your heels. They're, they're right here. They're almost catching you. Okay, so you can use this to talk about football. You can say, you know, um, Messi has broken through the defense, through the Real Madrid defense, and I don't know the names of any of the defenders, but, and um, Juanes is hot on his heels. Come back, Messi! Oh. <laughs> For example, okay? For example. Ooh, ooh, Messi is better than Ronaldo. Controversial. Controversial. <laughs> Controversial. Um, okay. Um, okay. <laughs> Neymar. Yeah. I don't, I don't want to talk about football. The, the truth is, I don't know anything about football. Um, so I'm a bad person to talk about. And yeah, you can use, you can use this as a metaphor. You could say that, um, you know, uh, mm, Apple, Apple wants to be, Apple wants to be the number one technology company in the world, but Amazon is hot on its heels. Yeah, as a metaphor, absolutely. Okay, the final one. The final one is neck. Okay, neck. So, neck means place. Okay? It means this, but it also means place. Okay? In Old English. In Old English, right? Um, and so, you can say... Imagine if you are, um, 
let's do some reverse racism, huh? Reverse racism. So imagine if you are in um, Nigeria. You're in Nigeria in, in a little village. You're in a little village in Nigeria. Everybody is black. Everybody. Okay? There's, there's, there's no white people. They're all black. They're in a Nigerian village. And then, suddenly, this white guy, this white guy comes in <laughs> with, with socks and sandals. Okay? A really white guy. Socks and sandals and a camera. <laughs> and a camera and maybe like a big hat. You know, like a big hat. And, I don't know, like maybe... Um, khaki, khaki trousers, you know, really, really bad white guy tourist, okay? And you say, wow, we don't have many white people in this neck of the woods. In this neck of the woods, okay? So woods means forest because a forest is made of trees and trees are made of wood. So woods is another word for forest, more or less, okay? So it's like saying we don't have many white guys in this part of the forest, in this neck of the woods, in this area. It's not normal, okay? Uh, so there you go. Lots of idioms related to the human body and related to human experience. Um, okay, um, I hope that you enjoyed that class. I, I had a great time. Please, if you are not in the Facebook group, go and join the Facebook group. There are incredible things happening there. You'll see. After five minutes, you'll be addicted. Um, thank you all so much for watching. Um, I had a great time and lots of love to you all. Bye. I'm Christian. This is Kangaroo English. I'll see you in class.